Well, I pulled a short list and I needed yeah. to start somewhere. So first of all, these su- summer blockbusters. This summer is blockbusters. summer blockbusters. We understand that movies can be big and expensive at other times of the year and they can make a lot of money at other parts of the year, like in October, November or around Christmas. That's fine, but this is the most summer money gets made in the summer. Summer blockbusters, such a special feeling to them. Um, so what I did for Brett and I is I took every movie. I made a list of every single movie that came out between Memorial Day and Labor Day, starting with Jaws. Starting with Jaws. Well, actually, all the way back throughout all of history. Okay. All, all, but but yeah, basically starting with Jaws. Um, the and I had every single movie that grossed. Over a hundred million dollars on this list that opened in the summer. Um, that was by a major studio. Duh, uh, period. That's a lot, of, or that's a it's a it's, it's a, so many movies. It's a lot it's of a movies. So many movies. So then you really start wondering, like, uh, is a hundred million really enough? Like, I'm down here at the hundred millions. Like, Evan Almighty. No collateral. No. This is the end. In I the like line collateral. Of fire. I love collateral. That's not a summer. I'm blockbuster. not saying these are bad movies. I'm not saying, a summer I'm saying like, this is not giving me summer blockbuster. No. It what really is, has what to is be... summer blockbuster? In addition to the money, what is like the vibe? Oh my god, the vibe is it's hot. A, you're going with a crew, whether it's your friends, yeah. or whether it's with like a big family, or whether it's with like a girl you like, or like it's a f- packed movie theater. It's hot. And um, the movie's going to be big. Like the movie tastes like Coke. Like right now, I'm just seeing an image yep. of like Will yep. Smith sweating. Yep. Right. Like yep. Will Smith is there. He's young. He's sweating. It's hot out. I am having a uh, Coke. You know, I'm here with my my aunt and my cousins that I only see once a year. Usually a genre movie out there. Usually a genre movie, a comic book movie, an it's action movie. It's going to be big. Yeah. Look, my dad's going to like it, but so is yep. my little cousin. Yep. Um, and Eisner, and I, we I, all want to go, except my mom who doesn't like movies, but she's going to go because it has X actor in it, that and, kind of a thing. And Eisner's de- Eisner's like definition as a cultural phenomenon is important. If you think yeah. of Barbie last year, if you think of Jurassic Park, any of these big summer blockbusters, they create this phenomenon that that transcends the movie itself and becomes this like cultural moment yeah. where it influences uh, oh, yeah. like fashion and toys and um, spin off this and that video games TV it's like it becomes this moment um, How, that everyone identifies with we all just with. lived through Barbie that is such yes, a good Barbie's example, a great this, example right? like, Barbie's a great example everybody went to the movies, we all, the movies. We all dressed in different fun pink Barbie-esque colors for yep, it yep. and then it be- it was like on Oreo packets for six months you know it was like yep. you couldn't eat fucking cereal without seeing Barbie you can't drive a car without seeing somebody with a Barbie you know something it just became the cultural moment so that's really yep. what you need that in a summer blockbuster and it tends to be I, I think it's so important culturally because most people's earliest memories of going to the movies are usually going to be summer blockbusters the ones that stick with you i mean i think of i think of jurassic park i think of independence day i think of you know men in black you know it's like the, these movies are really the like foundational movies yes. for individuals in terms of how and how you think about going to the movies what you think a movie is these movies kind of like you know after you move past animated movies disney movies once you're going to like live action movies these tend to be the movies that like define your understanding of movies as a person i think because they're so massive um and everyone goes to them and everyone gets to talk about them everyone talks about and you start to think of movies as these like cultural events that you can share with other people um and that and that and that represent a sort of place and a time um so i mean there's a financial dynamic and there's like a an untouchable dynamic of like memory and you know, cultural ephemera and zeitgeist, things that we can never put our fingers the on. The relationship to the zeitgeist is interesting, though, because for the most part, you know, Barbie had, had a little bit of this and that. But, like, for the most part, summer blockbusters are not trying to, like, literally capture a moment in time. If anything, they're trying to, like, escape the moment, the moment in time, divorce time, right. from the mm-hmm. moment in time. But then I think the best ones, the most interesting ones... They, they, it's impossible for them not to echo the time, to echo mm-hmm. the time period in some way, um, and to sort of represent it almost unintentionally by trying to uh, escape from it. They often kind of represent the the hopes and fears of of the year that they came out in some sort of way, and that's I think what creates the cultural phenomena aspect mm-hmm. um, of it. So let's let's get into then. Do we have a, a money cutoff, a, a, a box office cutoff? What do you I'm think? Th- well, look. These are the the domestic totals. I do kind of feel like a hundred and fifty million 
You have to have grossed 150 have million. 150. But there are some under 150 that had gigantic opening weekends, like 45, 50, 60 million dollar opening weekends. And when you read some of these names, what should we? How do you want to do this? Should we go back to some of those like fringe candidates? Do you want to get no, some, get some jaws up on the board? Let's get you know some what big I mean? ones out because I also okay. want to say like when we when we're doing the list, the top ten. It's going to be a combination of obviously movies we like, our favorite summer blockbusters, but I also want to pick 10 movies that are unequivocally summer blockbusters. I don't want to find like little loopholes here and there. I want us to pick our 10, like the 10 movies that are like the most summer blockbustery that we also like. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like, it's like, it's our personal feelings, our, our, our preferences, but also like, I want to make sure we nail that summer blockbuster vibe. We need to be disciplined in our, in our nominees because they have to really be emblematic of the genre summer blockbuster. That's right. To give you, because to give you an example of a movie that will not be on here, okay. but is on, I went up, I went online and looked around. It's on a lot of people's lists of the top summer blockbusters of all time uh, is the original Alien, which came out in the summer, uh, made a shit ton of money. It was a cultural phenomenon in, in a lot of ways. Uh, obviously, just even the chest burster became this thing. Um, but to me, so it checks a couple boxes, but to me, Alien is such an it's such an art movie at, at its core. It's so you know before you get the chest burster, it's so sort of thoughtful and atmospheric. Um, it's a brilliant fucking movie, one of my favorite horror movies of all time, sci-fi movies, however however you want to classify it. Um, but to me, there's a there's a melancholy to to it and a no tourism to it that doesn't really encapsulate what a summer what just a popcorn chugging summer blockbuster is. So for me, Alien mm. is not going to make my top ten. Not because it would it, if we're strictly going by the criteria of a money that made a lot of a, a movie that made a lot of money in the summer. Of course, it's one of my favorite movies of all time that made a lot of money in the summer. But to but me, it does not. I mean, it does. It just doesn't. Movies. Epitomize to me what a summer blockbuster is. Okay. So let's. So what is gonna what is gonna make this list? Why don't you start shouting out some candidates here? I mean, I don't think Alien made enough money to make our list, honestly. No, okay, so it um, doesn't even qualify. I, I don't think so. Box office wise, uh, I can look it up. I mean, look, let's just get some ones out. Let's just let's just start saying some ones that everybody knows. Yeah, there's Jurassic. Let's talk about Spielberg. There's right, Jurassic Park. Spielberg. There's Raiders of, of the Jaws, Lost Ark. Jaws, and there's Jaws. Those are the three that would be on a list right i mean look let's let, let me let me let me start it's here, hard i mean look it's jurassic yeah. park and jaws like let's just start there here's where we're gonna start with which i think both of those are gonna make this list they have to i don't know how you uh, Jaw, they're both perfect and they both like what says summer blockbuster more than jaws and jurassic park yeah, like yeah. They, they they're gonna be on here like we'll place them later they're gonna be high for me they are high on my personal list i know they're high on yours too or i'm sure they are um, but, uh, so those are, those are big ones. I mean, what are just like, well, here's what I'd say about Jurassic. Let's just get into Jurassic Park and Jaws. Okay, those to okay. me, I mean, I, I, I have, I basically have those one and two. Those to me are the, the original summer blockbuster in Jaws. And then to me, what is the pinnacle of summer blockbusters in, in Jurassic Park? Right, make make that case. Make the that reason case. I would give Jurassic Park the edge over Jaws on this list is with all due respect to Jaws. Jaws is creating the template of the summer blockbuster. If you go, uh, when you go back and watch it, um, it is really like it's it's such an interesting movie because it is a it is a B movie. It's a B movie that literally is like evolving before your eyes into this new type of movie. But it has a lot of still has a lot of B movie tropes. I mean, you think about the opening of Jaws. It just sort of like scans over this this bunch of hippies on a beach and it, and it feels like it feels like a 60s 70s genre movie it feels like you know from the Roger Corman school it feels like fun and cheap and it, like it's shocking to think of that intro and then to, to imagine the movie that you're about to get is jaws and there are other moments like that as well um and so to me jaws is it obviously needs to be on this list but it is it is it is like creating the summer blockbuster out of a B, out of a genre B movie. Um, and so it still has a, a foot in sort of the B movie world. Um, whereas by the time Spielberg gets to Jurassic Park, the summer blockbuster is a thing. 
He gets more money than God. You know he's basically going to get a blank check. He has such incredible technical resources at his disposal. By the time we get to Jurassic Park, Spielberg has all the tools to like create the ultimate summer blockbuster uh, instead of having to like shoehorn the summer blockbuster out of a B movie, which I think is what happens in Jaws. So that's no shade to Jaws, um, but speaking and and I. I I, I think I maybe even like Jaws better than Jurassic Park, but that's where this list is about not just what movies do we like, but what movies most epitomize being a summer blockbuster. And to me, Jurassic Park is the movie that I like the most that is also epitomizes the the genre. So I honestly, I, I have... I have Jurassic Park at one and Jaws at two on, on, on the list I came up with. Um, uh but I also, you know, it's there's a question of how much how much room can Spielberg get on on this list. Too. Well, we'll get to it. Okay. I don't need to rehash your points. I just want to say that I I I hear what you're saying. Jaws is a perfect movie. It is it is unbelievably good, and I love it. But you know what else is a perfect movie that is unbelievably good that I love? Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. And nothing kind of slaps of summer. Nothing tastes like Coke and popcorn more than Jurassic Park, baby. And I do love me some Jurassic Park. I don't just like love me some. Like it's like one of my favorite movies of all time. Always has been. Um, I'm I'm ready to give it one as well, and I'm ready to give Jaws two. But Brett, why don't we hold on for a little bit? All right, let's hold on for while a second. We can kind of like poke let's around. Let's hold on for a second. Because what if what if we forget? I just for the listeners at home, they're not staring at a giant list. I just want to throw out some of these names for context. Yeah, what are we talking? You know, here's about? like our, here's the top ten grossing domestic releases uh, in the summer ever: Top Gun Maverick, Jurassic World, Barbie, The Avengers, Incredibles two, The Lion King, The Dark Knight, Finding Dory, and Avengers: a- Age of Ultron. Um, uh, and one more for fun, uh, Dark Knight Rises, then Shrek 2. So, I mean, that's just fun for context. I mean, these movies made just a ton of money. Top Gun Maverick grossed $718 million domestic. I mean, that's just preposterous. But, Brett, two two of these um, titles do jump out at yeah, me. Yeah, what do you got? The Lion King and The Dark Knight. Can I talk on these for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuz we so we start with The Lion King cuz okay. I do think we're going to need an animated movie on this list cuz those like Cause that, that Disney run yeah, into yeah. the Pixar run, those are all summer blockbusters. We need one to represent well, I, that. You know, I mentioned Lion King right off the bat because not cuz of the financial reasons but also because let's talk about some of those other animated things that could go on this list. The Lion King was always a favorite of mine growing up. I recently had the chance to watch it with my wife's or my uh, nephew. Um, last Christmas, and I think I've seen The Lion King, you know, whatever, 10 times throughout my life. Um, there's a reason I've seen it 10 times, Brent. That movie is phenomenal. That is, that is, I don't know, like what perfect means, but that's a perfect movie. That is a it story so perfectly fast. told. It moves so fast. It's so great. It's doing Hamlet it has, and it's doing it like that in a way that's understandable to kids. It's it amazing. has great uh, voice performances. All the oh, songs are li- like literally classic. It's The Lion King. I mean, just like other nominees or other animated movies that made a ton of money in the summer shrek 2 the toy stories um let's see here minions the rise of Gru, despicable me yeah um i i there have to be some like good ones on this list let's see i'd like to Uh, speak to i'd like to speak to lion king as well though because i'm gonna poke around for some more such a foundational movie for me as a kid and also like really really nailed that cultural phenomena thing yeah. i mean the soundtrack alone the soundtrack is, uh, is there's another list for the soundtrack i mean the soundtrack was massive those elton john songs were massive um and it's such a it's also has that unlikeliness which i like the, it, it's it's not a likely cultural phenomenon you know it's like it's it's um right now it seems so obvious but i guess there's something almost like quaint about it but like no you didn't question it at the time it just appeared with the force of like a historical fact and we all based on the jungle books based it's a movie about lions based on hamlet it's it's insane insane. that is but it's like but you don't think about any of that like it just it arrived like a a freaking nuclear bomb which is what a summer blockbuster does Mm -hmm. and the whole culture just just revolved around lion king for three months that summer yeah i mean and it's great. Like you said, it's, it's a awesome. great movie. I, I I think it's the best Disney animated Simpsons movie. Simpsons movie. Can I interest you in Madagascar? Can I interest you in... No, I'm hearing nothing that... Um, that compu- I, what about Ratatouille, Brett? 
Well, here's the thing. All right, this is this is a good question. Two hundred and six million. Ratatouille is my favorite uh, animated movie of all time. It does qualify based on the criteria. That's right. It sure does. It opened uh, the forty seven million dollar opening weekend. Huge weekend. We actually we actually watched it. I watched it with Sandy last week. He's got a little Remy uh, doll that he now sleeps with, which makes me very uh, proud. Um, uh, I mean that like. Sp- this movie's so good. That speech at the end about the role of the critic. Ratatouille is fantastic, but Brett, as good as it is, I don't know if it caused the cultural That's it. That's ruckus it. That's what I was gonna say. that the Lion King That's started. What I was gonna you say. Know? It's like, it's it's maybe a little too smart, a little too savvy, uh, a little too niche in certain ways. It didn't have like the soundtrack, for example. It didn't, you know, it it, it did not have the, it did not achieve the, the cultural phenomenon that Lion King does. Lion and King's that, a musical. That's, that's right. what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for for this list is movies that like are at the center of all the Venn mm-hmm. diagrams. We like them. We think they are hot. They, we think, we think they are, you know, peak cinema, peak achievements in cinema, but they were these massive cultural phenomenon, um, and they made a shit ton of money. We're looking for, you know, to hit all three of those quadrants, and I don't think Ratatouille hits all of them. Uh, so I'm going to say Lion King needs to go on this list. So right I, now- I love it. I mean, put it on the short list. Yeah, look, short you, list right now, we've yeah. got Lion King, Jaws, Jurassic Park. That Lion King takes care of an animated movie. I don't think we need two, because we only have ten. Takes care of musicals, too. Um, Not that I think of musicals <laughs> in summer, but just in case- now you want to talk about the Dark Knight because we need okay. we, 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 we need a Batman. Let's talk about superhero movies. Let's talk about Batman. Batman. All right, just here's just some I'm looking at staring me dead in the eye. I got you know, the Dark Knight made a ton of money. Dark Knight Rises, Batman Begins made a ton of money. Spider Man, Spider Man Two, um, Transformers is that comic book? Thor: Love and Thunder Toys. not coming close to our Marvel. beautiful list. Fuck off. Spider Man: Far From Home, Jump Off a Bridge, Wonder Woman. All right, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let, let, all right, those it, movies, right? It, like, I'm thinking of Batman almost as different. As oh, Batman as a not Bat- superhero Bat- as a as Batman. Okay. I, I think we could probably find the way to get maybe get two superhero movies on here, and one of them has to be a Batman movie because I love it. So you're talking it- about the Nolans, you're talking about the Burtons, and you're talking about like the first Joel Schumacher one. Okay. I think right. Th- All- those are the right. ones that, that that are eligible. I wow. Think. I mean, what a thrilling. So where are you going with what your a head? thrilling question? I wasn't there for Tim Burton's Batman. Okay, I get it. Prince was on the soundtrack. Jack Nicholson. Michelle I Pfeiffer love in that the sequel. movie. Come on, now. Michelle Pfeiffer in the sequel. We're not picking the sequel's not going to be it. But I was there, folks, for the Dark Knight. Dark Knight changed changed the game. I was away at like a at like a theater program in the middle of nowhere, and we would like walk. I saw like I saw it three times to the movie theater to go see the Dark Knight. It talk about a movie that owned not only the three months that preceded it but i don't know the 15 years that preceded it ne'er do i go to a movie when it's not at least subconsciously referencing the dark knight and i mean that in a million different multitude of ways but every single giant financial cinematic project since the dark knight has just been in the shadow of dark knight all the way up until dune 2 like christopher nolan just like spielberg did with jaws that is sort of like another inflection point batman begins i remember seeing that in the summer and i loved it it was huge we were all excited there was a new batman but dark knight like dark knight changed everything dark knight and then just talk about I always like to make jokes, and we can do this on basement takes, and it's a, it's fun to play. What's your favorite Batman? What's your favorite? I'm not saying Dark Knight's my favorite Batman, although maybe it is because it's so freaking good. What I'm saying is it's going on my list of top 10 summer blockbusters. It, it checks all of our criteria and then some, and then on top of all of it, Brett, the movie's dope. The movie's fucking good. It has great performances. It's so big. It's so huge. It's so culturally important what other batman are you flirting with putting above yeah. dark knight well be, here's the thing dark knight checks so many boxes i rem- i remember it as a as a summer phenomenon mm-hmm. i think i saw it a couple times in theaters it owned that summer it redefined big budget movie making i think you're absolutely right i think nolan became the new spielberg with that movie and then all the other act uh, directors of that caliber started to kind of exist in his shadow in a way he certainly created a, a a new template for the summer blockbuster i wonder if tonally 
tonally it's it's a little like dour for a summer blockbuster it it has a it has a very dark tone a very melancholy tone uh it doesn't really have like a happy superhero ending it has a very conflicted ending but then again jurassic park has a very conflicted ending they all have to abandon the project and flee the island so maybe that's not a trademark of a summer blockbuster but tonally it just it feels a little dour and melancholy whereas the Tim Burton Batman, which which uh, I would say is in is on par in terms of a cultural phenomenon, is on par with The Dark Knight for for nineteen eighty nine. I mean, you're talking, you know, that thing was in as as weird as it is in moments. That thing was in McDonald's lunchbox, yeah. in McDonald's oh. Happy Meals, uh, toys, music videos, no, no, spinoffs, I, I'm, this and that. I I I'm convinced it was massive. You know, I just wasn't there. But but, but I hear you. Mm-hmm. I would say. E- equally massive as the Dark Knight in terms of a cultural phenomenon, in, ter- in terms of influence on uh, popcorn filmmaking, but it's like it's it's a little fun. It's a little more fun. It's a little kitschier. It retains a little bit more of the sort of Batman kitsch. Um, it's a little sillier. It's easier to kind of just sit back and chug popcorn to. Right. Um, it's not obsessed with psychological realism. I mean, it's like it's, listen. The Dark Knight is like. M- I think you're on to something and I'm not saying no, but I just feel like the dark Knight. are are we like divorcing it from like the Heath Ledger death and like, and the school and the, and the theater shootings and like putting all of that behind it. Now it has such like insane emotional baggage, but that summer it just had holy fucking shit. Batman is the fucking best. And now he's got a bike. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, Whoa, the Joker just blew up the building and Batman, you know, has a bike. I mean, it, you know, now it's like very dour, sad thing to think about because of all of its cultural baggage. How about this? I'm not, I, I haven't convinced myself. I think I like the original Batman very much. Yeah. Um, but I know in my heart that Dark Knight is 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 a good pick. Batman, I don't know. Brett, what about the Spider-Man? I mean, gonna, the Sorry, I'm, not, I'm jumping around, but like, I don't think we've come to a conclusion. I'm ready to sit here all night and fucking have this whole Cause, yeah, thing Yeah, because I mean, the out. thing yeah. is, we're gonna, we're also going to have to represent, you know, the last 10 years of blockbusters, 10, 15 years. I think we're going to have a lot of like 90s stuff on here. So Dark, so Dark Knight may, we, we're, we're going to need something that like represents the that era Okay, well, let's put it on the back burner for a second. Let's let's feel out some more choices. All right. Uh, do, so you, dark, do you, do so you dark, have Spider Man? We so we've yeah, narrowed uh-huh. the Batman uh, spot down to Dark Knight or well, I mean, look, I, I could also I, I I am going to edit myself for time. We have a lot of movies to talk about, but sure. I could also make an impassioned Batman Begins case. But we can we can move forward. We can move all forward. We can. All that's gonna do is all that's gonna do is is um is. That's going to take out Dark Knight, though. They're going to they're going to just compete with each okay. other, and then that, no, I didn't say words. So I wouldn't bring up Batman say words. Begins if you're fighting Dark word. Knight. All right, what do you got Look, next? We Spider-Man? don't care about superhero movies, but we got to talk about Spider Man Spider- because the, Sam yeah, Raimi's Spider Man movies were that was the huge. summer. That dude. was huge. They that was were huge. the summer. That was huge. I mean, I both of those. I left the first Sam Raimi Spider Man, you know, wishing I could web myself. I remember just like putting my arms up like uncontrollably trying to web from thing to thing. I was so enthralled by Spider-Man and then Spider-Man two was like such a huge summer deal. And Um, I was like a pretentious college student when I mm -hmm. saw the first Spider-Man and I was like, I was like the, like the, the, my, I I took my glasses off Mm -hmm. and I rolled down my black turtleneck and I was like, well, I didn't know I could have fun like this at the movies. I didn't know I could still have, I didn't know I was legally allowed to have fun like this at the movies. The first, the first Spider-Man was just such a like, um, shock to the system of like a return to just like fun Mm. comic booky. Like it it was just, I mean, ugh. It's the first Spider-Man is uh, Willem Dafoe, your guy James Franco, Why all these amazing guy? actors, like you know, just amazing stuff. I love the movie. Maybe there is no Batman. Maybe Spider-Man is our superhero for the summer. Who knows? I don't know. Spider-Man and the first, the first Raimi Spider-Man and one of the Batmans are both like feel like top ten contenders. Okay, so let's table that for a second. And, I'll, and we should just say I don't think we're gonna put a Marvel movie on here. They're just like I just don't like them enough. I don't know. No, what like what do you mean a Marvel movie? I mean they're so like. What they, do you mean like Iron Man? Yeah, we can't. absolutely not. Right, yeah. Guys, look at these movies we have yeah. on this list. We have we have uh what a pick your pick your poison. You got your hangover. You got Men in Black. Okay, how about Men in Black? Let's talk about Will Smith. Right, let's talk I don't about see Will any Smith. Will Smith on this so list. So Will so Will Smith um with uh um 
Independence ba- Day. Bad oh, Boys, Independence Day, Men in Black, Wild Wild West. Will Smith only made one was movie one a year more? in the mid. No, it's those no, four. Okay, okay. He made he made one movie a year in the mid nineties because Wild Wild West ruined it. Even though it's great, it might be the best of the whole bunch. But um, those. For for those four years, what is that like ninety four to ninety eight or no ninety five to ninety nine? Um, every he made one movie a year, and it was the biggest movie of the summer. Will Smith is uh, if if Spielberg is, is the face of summer blockbusters as a director, Will Smith is the face of summer blockbusters yes. as a performer. So we need at least one Will Smith on oh, here. Yeah, um, he's just, it's exactly right. It's just like Spielberg. Yeah, we could have three. I mean, Independence Day, Men in Black. And Bad Boys or Bad Boys Two, pick your poison. My, well, actually, right. wait, Bad Boys come out in the summer, or is it just Bad Boys Two is the only nominee? Bad Boys came out in the summer. Yeah. Okay, Bad cool. Boys started started his run. I my vote, my top choice, and again, a lot of this is personal. A lot of this is based bring on it, bring you know, it. when I saw the movie. What you know what. My my choice would be Independence Day. Independence Day rocked my freaking world. It had everything they are blowing up the what you had never seen it became it became a, a a big trope and of course you had disaster movies before but you had never seen the white house blown up in quite a, as as amazing a fashion as an independence day whole skyscrapers blown to shit whole cities destroyed and it became a trope it became a go to but you had never seen anything like that before that's that shot of the white house exploding it's burned into my memory forever. And you get Will Smith, and you get Jeff Goldblum, and uh, you get Bill Pullman, and you get Crazy Quaid. You get all these people, right? Everybody is cooking. You get Vivica A. Fox. You get um, uh, you get um, Torch Song. Harvey, Harvey Firestein's in this freaking you thing. You get so many great character actors and stars. You get freaking tentacly aliens when they shove Data up against the up against the wall, and they're like puppeting him oh my god i was like i went through so many different emotions the reason i give it an edge over men in black is because the range of emotions was more comprehensive and i think that's part of a summer blockbuster is i was scared i was i was uh i was laughing i was i was enthralled by what i was seeing i was excited by what i was seeing the the adrenaline was pumping um but i they had some legitimate scares in it when when uh when um you know, again, that alien is like puppeting the scientist and he's like smushed, his face is smushed up against the glass and you see the like the, the outline of the alien behind him. They go to frickin' Area 51 in this movie. Like there's conspiracy shit. Like this movie had every freaking thing I wanted out of a summer blockbuster. Honestly, if I'm just going personal, like personal experiences, it's Jurassic Park and Independence Day to me would be were, were the bi- the most impactful summer blockbusters that I watched uh, growing up. Well, that's funny because I think now's the time for me to bring up my impactful alien Please. summer blockbuster. Talk to me, Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. Okay, much like you, Brett. If okay. I were making my personal list, which I have, it's on my desk. It includes Speeder, Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. I love that movie for a lot of the reasons. It seems like you liked Independence Day. I liked War of the Worlds. Two totally different movies, both of which I watched in the past two weeks, but I'm excited we're talking about them. Roland Emmerich's Independence Day is such a, like, it it follows, sorry to be that guy, it follows, you know, the World Trade Center bombings and, like, the Oklahoma City, you know, bombings. It's like, in that you know, that's sort of the, where we are with, like, uh, America and attacks and terrorism like we're not in 9-11 it yet. It speaks to national anxieties without it, being it, like literal about it, it. It does and but it's funny in Emmerich's Independence Day everybody is so rah-rah and there's such a rush to war there's not even a que- not that this makes it good or bad I'm just saying there's not a question whether or not the aliens are good or here for the right reasons and they're just going to f- get them and um, there's they all band together and, and the president you know flies the ship and leads the charge and they all do it right and it is kind of uh, interesting juxtaposition to one of my favorite summer blockbusters War of the Worlds which came out in 2005 after 9-11 and this movie is humongous, just like Independence Day. Humongous aliens, gigantic um, skyscrapers collapsing, the airplane, you know, destruction, um, you know, all of the the terror of alien hands zipping in and getting you. But I just found, I mean, I was a kid at that point, post 
younger and i found war of the worlds very very like affecting in a not fun independence day way i found it fucking scary i was scared of aliens and i think we all were subconsciously or consciously scared of being attacked in 2005 which i know is crazy but it's just the way it was there's a scene there's a scene in war of the worlds where the aliens start attacking and tom cruise is running down the street and he is covered in that very specific like gray dust of these like of bodies and destruction and all of this in a way that like very clearly evokes you know all the photos of 9-11 that we saw Mm -hmm. and it's um it's terrifying and resonant and you you uh made this argument to me earlier this week and i said what are you war of the worlds that's like mid spielberg what are you talking about i hadn't seen it since it came out you said go back and watch it go back and watch it i went back and watched it joe you are absolutely right it is a it is a underrated very underrated spielberg very underrated summer blockbuster um it, it is it is um it's scary and immediate and the 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 action sequences are so thoughtful and they it all feels real it's kind of it almost is like filmed in real time it's so almost real. like almost like weirdly hard. I, I think I, I feel like there's like a subconscious hearkening back to the Orson Welles radio play with the with like the real timingness yes. of it all where you see this like you see what it would actually be be like if this happened the sort of the the sort of stages of like panic and confusion into fear and like it, it it's really like i don't know why i th- i like spielberg never takes a movie off he is like war of the worlds remake he's gonna put so much thought oh. into it so much detail into it i mean i i he, i always lump him in yeah. my mind with lucas but mm. what are watching war of the worlds this 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 week i was like he's he's our hitchcock i think in a way the genres don't map exactly the same the tone of the movies don't map exactly the same but he's our hitchcock because he always works through action through set pieces he's always thinking about how to sort of create these cinematic set pieces to tell the story rather than like just you know r- over relying on, on on dialogue to tell the story and in war of the world he does such an um, amazing job of it when you do the universal tram tour at universal studios they still have the the plane the wreckage of the plane where spielberg demanded that they get an actual like boeing 737 or whatever and just rip it apart and destroy it to show what would happen if a plane crashed in a in a in a residential neighborhood you your tram goes through it and it's, it's kind of like it's amazing. The, everybody goes quiet for a second because it all feels too real. Yeah. And then when you watch it in the movie, the way that scene is executed, he's not he doesn't sh- he's not showing off. He is not like Michael Bay about it. He is not he is he is combines these like massive, perfectly executed effects with like pretty like subtle um uh character first. Yeah. Plot for storytelling. It's so true, man. It's it's it's, it's such a hu- it's yeah. the movie's so deeply human. It's another Spielberg, so it's about you know divorce, and and it's so painfully. Um, yeah, the family uh, dynamic so, is painful. It's so uh, personal on this massive scale, and I found it really resonant. Independence Day. I don't want to take away its like charms. It's super fun. I found it to be like quite long, um, and. It's not. It flies by. It's 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 good. I'm not going to be Mr. Anti Independence Day, but you know, I just wanted to shout it's out. It's got everything. An, an underrated baby. summer classic that really. Here's needs to here's be why I don't think it can make the list though. Sadly, even though Independence we Day, War of the Worlds, uh, War of the Worlds. Uh, Wait, no, what? Independence Day should definitely be on the top ten. No way. Here's why War of the Worlds huh? can't make the top ten. I'm so sorry. And everything. Wait, is, wait, wait, wait. We mean so sorry. We got a fucking lot of work to do. I War of the Worlds could be on this it. list. I loved it. Here's what's going to disqualify what the fuck? it. It did. It was, uh, I think, I guess maybe a, maybe it was like ahead of its time a little bit in term in term. I don't know. Some, there's something about it did not become a cultural phenomenon to the extent that could qualify for this list. Uh, and what? if anything, it was considered at the uh. time. I think a little bit of a miss, uh. and and it was not something that like everybody was talking about or this. Well, everyone's or that. dumb as shit, Brett. Well, that's but that's 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 the the, the little trick of this right, list. I, I'm look. Is I, that I, we right. have to pick? We have. We ha- we have to include our personal feelings, but we need movies that epitomize what it means to be a summer blockbuster. And War of the but Worlds does w- not epitomize summer blockbuster. In the interest of time, I'm not going to continue. You know I'm right. You know ah! you know that it would just be a ten minute argument that led you back to right where you are right now, which is which is uh, I was reluctantly there. It was that agreeing summer. with me. It was packed. It was fucking fun. I had a big coke. Everyone was scared. It was fucking fun. Nine eleven was scary too. And do you know that? 
in Sp- Steven Spielberg also made Munich in 2005. Can you believe Steven Spielberg made two of his He's five best movies in one year? He's unbelievable. You All heard right. me, folks. Plus, plus Spielberg is probably going to get three movies. Well, what about Raiders? List. He can't have four. Yeah, I think Raiders. All right, we need an Indiana Jones. Okay. All three of them came out in the summer. They hey, all made a lot agree. of money. They all qualified. We need an Indiana well, Jones. Well, the first three originals, and then you like Crystal Skull for whatever reason, because well, you're sick in the head. I like but, Crystal Skull for a lot of reasons. I understand that it's not going to make this list, but Crystal Skull is my favorite Indiana Jones movie, and I'll save that more for basement takes. My favorite Indiana Jones movie is The Last Crusade. Um, a lot of that has to do with just personal reasons. I think it's the first one I saw. We had a little VHS of it, and I used to watch it over and over and over again. Um, I flirted with trying to make an argument for Last Crusade. I cannot I cannot come up with any argument uh, uh, to put it in over Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark is just such a defining <laughs> film. Still, still over top three. Such a phenomenon. I mean, <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Let's do it. Joe, I didn't even like, I wasn't even tracking it as I was doing it. I just wrote out my top ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it as Jurassic Park, Jaws, Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's I have so I have top funny. three or spell and I did not I didn't I didn't even mean to. But how do you Raiders, argue with like, Raiders and what War goes of the over World those movies? Are in my top ten. Uh I don't know, but let's go ahead and see if we can dig up some um nominees okay i'm gonna toss out some ones that we talked about this week just to rattle them through and then we can kind of go back and pick what pick up on what you were picking all right and even if we don't put independence day on we need a will smith there has to be a will Smith. okay well then my vote right now is for men in black because okay you know what you know what men in black has that independence day doesn't the laughs men in black's funny and if we're going to say oh the dark knight and war of the worlds are too dark not that independence day is too dark for this list independence day is made for this list i understand that but men in black i mean first there's like the money quotient it made a ungodly sum of money it yep. spawned many sequels spawned a television show spawned you know has the freaking song um it's iconic uh, you know everybody knows the you know the iconography of men in black and it's it's really funny, and it's got those little aliens. I mean, before the minions, all we had back then were those little aliens, guys. Um, Here's what yeah. you're gonna have to do, okay. and I'll give you a second to think about it. Mm-hmm. If you want Men in Black on this list Here over Independence Day, Men in Black, we're just gonna agree on Wild Wild West, aren't we? If you, yeah. mm-hmm. no, because Wild you just, Wild West no, is no, too. You, we need the cultural it's, resonance. Yeah, it's too much us. It's that's too us, much us. us. It's okay. not enough. It's not enough of the culture. Gotta love. If Wild, you Wild want West. Men in Black over Independence Day, I do. Then you got to give me Burton's Batman over Dark Knight. So you think about it if you want to make that trade. Do you want? Do you? Is it more important to you to have Dark Knight on this list? Or Men in Black on this list relative to their competitors. How much I don't want to have. Okay, all right. I love the. It's a great. Right. It's a great. I'll bet. let you choose. We'll check back in later on that later. The, I'm very excited. The power is in your hands, I'm, sir. I, I feel powerful. I wish I was in your position. You get to. You get to choose. I'm it, left with the dregs. But you no, have Brett, to you wanted to mention you Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. You said earlier. Uh, no, I don't think oh, that we, wasn't I, I, I'm not going to put in. I don't have any Harry Potter movies nah, in my I'm top kidding. fifty. You, you didn't say that to me. Okay. Okay. Um, here's some ones just to say. Yeah, what do you got? Other, uh, Inception, no. Twister, Signs. Twi- Twister is an interesting. Ultimatum. Twister okay. is an interesting. All right, here are some like here are some like uh, I would call like uh, um, second tier options that could be sort of five through ten options that I think are that I think are interesting. And I think we need at least one or two of these to really represent what a summer blockbuster is. Well, uh, twi- Twister, okay, which I just watched um, two nights ago. Uh, um, Jean de Bon's Twister. Mm-hmm. Um, he had, uh, you know, he had cut his teeth. Speed. He had learned, because uh, um, uh, John DeBond did Speed and Twister, right? Yes. But then, uh, oh, he was, you know, you know where his name came up for me recently. He was the, um, he was the cinematographer on Hunt for Red October on John cool. McTiernan's Hunt know you were, for Red October. Oh, that's yes. awesome. God, so he that's created, awesome. and the look of that film was so gorgeous. Cool. So John DeBond, um, uh cut his teeth on. On Hunt for Red October, and then goes and makes Speed and Twister. I think he should be represented on this list, uh, or at least be in contention. Uh, so Speed or Twister, I think, are both really interesting. Are really interesting options. They are fun. They are big. They are actiony. They scream. They're kind of like absurd and silly in their premises, you uh-huh. know. Um, but they they just scream summer blockbuster movie to me. Um, so Speed or Twister. Um, not a big James Cameron fan, but I, I could not find a way to not include Terminator 2 on this list. I think Terminator 2 is such, um, it's such a summer blockbuster movie. Uh, I, I also found a, found a lot of we need to represent some sequels because this is the well, one. Do we this, have to work on that? This like, is yeah. this is the yeah. list where 
sequels r- rule, I think. I think sequels sequels are a, it's often, you know, like if you think of the first Terminator, a lot of times the first movie, uh, studios aren't sure if it's going to be a hit. They don't know. It's a lot of times the first one is a surprise hit. But then when it is, when you get to the sequel, then you got all the money. Because I think that's one thing we haven't mentioned is that a trait of a summer blockbuster, I think, is that is that it's not a su- it's not a surprise hit. The studios know they it's going it to be big. Be, right. They want it to be big. They put the full apparatus behind it, the full marketing budget, the full t- uh, technical effects budget. They put all that, and so a lot of times you see that more in the second movie than in the first movie. Um, so I think T two deserves consideration. Um, oh, a big one. I have this at number four, Joe. Mm-hmm. Is the uh, 1996 Mission Impossible the first Mission Impossible? Yeah, that's a great um, movie, Brett. With uh, and you what could... about the sequel thing you just said? <sighs> but also, like, that's one of many criteria. Mission Impossible was a blockbuster. They expected it to yes. do well financially. Yes, you know what I mean? Because it, it has like, look, De Palma directed yeah, it. It. Fucking... it has some uh, some like a couple little artsy touches that you don't find in the sequels. But overall, it still had. Oh, it's a big spy it's movie. Still, it's, it's a big Tom spy Cruise. movie. Tom Cruise, like some of the biggest most memorable action sequences of the entire 90s. Tom Cruise coming down on the yeah. on the string and almost hitting yeah. the ground. Uh, him um, putting the bubble gum on the helicopter and explodes mm-hmm. and he flies into the train. I mean, some of, the, some of the biggest, most memorable action sequences. So I have the first Mission Impossible because it's it's right at the center for me um, where it, it checks all the boxes in terms of money, cultural phenomenon, uh, and it's my favorite of the... Of that entire franchise, so I have I have Mission Impossible on here. Um, we're gonna have to talk about Star Wars at some point. We're gonna talk about Star Wars. All right. Well, listen. Yeah. Let, let's do it right now. All right. Mission Impossible is a good nominee. I like Mission Impossible. Terminator Two is a good nominee. Just for the record, I like Terminator more than Terminator Two, and I like Terminator Two plenty. That's all I'm gonna say on that right now. Star Wars, Brett. You piece of shit. A Star Wars movie is going on this list. Whoa! I, can I inter- Why did you think I not want one on Can here? I interest you in either Star Wars A New Hope or Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back? One of those bad boys, Brett, has to go on this list. The reason I said, Brett, you POS, yeah, 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 yeah. was because sometimes you, for justifiable reasons... Talk shit Turn about Star your Wars. nose up at the Star Wars franchise. Um, yeah, I, but I mean, let's like let's like let's be honest right now. This like, is the this downside. This, well, to me, this is I love summer blockbusters. Yeah. I mean, just reliving these movies. These are just foundational movies yeah, for me. They movie. created my love of cinema. The downside of summer blockbusters to me is that is that it's it's blood in the water for the studios. They smell money and then they want to push it as hard as they as they can. The thing that I don't like, I don't mind sequels. I don't mind franchises. I, I have a lot of fun with them. I lo- I love it. The problem for me is when you get into this point where it's just like this like it's like this lust for for complete fucking control of everything so that the the marvel movies consume everything they take up every other movie's budget you can't make comedies anymore because the studios say well we're giving you comedy with the marvel movies and those are the ones that make money when star wars consumes everything i like i like a temporary cultural moment i don't like this sort of decades long hegemony where where other movies are getting choked to death in the you know because every all the money and the and the, and the marketing budgets and everything has to go to marvel or star wars so that really turned me against a Star Wars franchise is just this sort of like just just the fucking onslaught of it all just the endless onslaught of it all um I, you can interest me though in I I'm I I would lean towards Empire Strikes Back because I think I think again the the uh the first Star Wars is is sort of a happy accident. I mean, they're making a lot of movies, you know, like that around that time period, sort of you know like fun space adventures and this and that. Um, I the first one was I think was 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 you know a bit of a surprise phenomenon. And then by the time you get to the second one, oh my God, we are roll we are rolling now, and we got better screenwriters on board. We got more thrills and chills and more characters. We get more Darth Vader. We get there's so much fun in Empire Strikes Back. It's not only the best Star Wars movie of all time. I think it qualifies as the most summer blockbustery uh, Star uh, Star Wars movie of all time because everyone is fucking ready to rock at that point. I like it. I'm going to agree with you, but just like for fun movie talk for a second, I wonder, I know the Star Wars, they didn't expect it to be the biggest thing in the history of God and man, but American Graffiti right before Jaws made an ungodly sum of money, like a hundred and... 20 yeah. 130 million dollars insane 1950s like, wave means, of nostalgia yes yes yeah. that whole like america so i wonder if they um 
I wonder if I, and I just don't know. Just like I wonder what the studio thought of George and the juice with the Star Wars after American Graffiti. It all the Star Wars stories make it sound like they they didn't expect anything out of the movie. No, they gave him the fucking yeah, merch rights, right? <laughs> Right, I know. Which is weird, <laughs> they handed, his movie just they handed so him a billion money. dollars that they didn't have to. I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, okay, sorry. Just some more. Right, so, I also but, just, I also uh, just uh, think yeah. it's, 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 it's still very, very early in the right in right, the right. in the history of summer blockbusters. So it's, it's like there wasn't even they didn't know such a thing as Star Wars was possible. Much, right. you know. So, um, so but by the time we get to Empire Strikes Back, though, everyone is on the same page, mm-hmm. and it, that that's when to me it's just the the franchise hits its peak, you know. Financially, artistically, you know, et cetera. Um, so, I, w- I I'm fine with em- I'm fine with either New Hope or Empire Strikes Back. I would just I would vote for Empire Strikes Back. Um, I love Empire Strikes Back. I'm happy to put that that there. All right, now here. Okay, so let's 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 say Star Wars episode was at five episode five as as thank you a finalist. Um, all right, here's a couple other options yeah, for you. Just hit me with I got like yeah, hit hit me. I, right. I have names for you too. I have so many names. Can we get Yeah, I I I know. Is it possible? Is it conceivable to get a comedy on this list? Okay, here's my short list for comedies. I'm glad you said it. A comedy has to go on this list because that's a huge part of going to the movies and we stand for comedy here. Okay, so here are some options. Here are the candidates. Get yeah, hit me with them. Rush Hour 2. <laughs> this ties nothing else. Rush it's Hour not even 2. A comedy. No, I want, I want action, real, action comedy. real contenders. Bridesmaids. Something about Mary. There's something about Mary. Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby. Scary Movie. Scary Movie. Um, well, that's pretty good right there. I mean, Rush yeah. Hour 2, earlier this week, we were both looking at each other like, don't sleep on Rush Hour Two. We both people, checked it out. People, it's okay. You can sleep on Rush Hour Two. I love you Rush can sleep Hour. On Rush Hour Two. In my heart, I love Rush Hour Two, but in practice, I like Rush Hour Two. I I, I thought when you brought it up, I was like, oh, maybe Rush Hour Two, because I remember. I, really I remember thought, as I a like, kid, oh, it was yeah, it was Rush like Hour the biggest. Two. It was a huge movie. Funniest thing huge, I ever saw. Huge. Yeah. Um, it, no, you no. know, I mean, look, it doesn't have to age well. I'm not really worried about that. It doesn't age well, but that's not going to disqualify it. What disqualifies it uh, mm-hmm. is. The movie's held together with tape. It's cheap. It, the whole movie, like you watch it now, it feels cheap. It does not feel like a summer blockbuster. Uh, it feels like an accidental uh, hit. Brett Ratner couldn't direct his way out of a of, of a fucking shoebox. Like it just the whole movie feels like cheap and held together with tape. Um, and it literally was a hit just for two things: Chris Tucker's star power at oh, that point and that the guy. Jackie Chan oh. action sequences. But other than that, the movie does not feel feel like a summer blockbuster. It feels it feels. Uh, cheap and small. So it's not making it. It's not going to be Here's Rush Hour 2. Ted. Um, ah, fucking Ted. Back no. to the Future. Here, let me help you. Ready? No, pass. And then Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers, interesting. Wedding Crashers is actually the only... Because here's what wedding cra- here's like wedding crashers wedding is going crashers. for. Because the, the the reason it's hard to get a comedy on this list is because most successful comedies are are somewhat surprises, right? You know, like it's hard to know comedically. It's mm. really hard to know what's going to hit. You know, you think of like the summer of um, the summer of super bad, right? That was like mm-hmm. that was a surprise. That wasn't. Um, I mean, you start to. Oh, that wasn't. That was. Uh, I'm sorry to be. No, no, please. But like, yeah, that, I don't think that's on this list. Okay, great. Okay, so not um, super bad, but like, but just in terms of like hit comedy, yeah, there's uh-huh. something about Mary. You start. I think people start to realize a, like a week or two before it's about to come out, just based on like early audience look who's returns. Um, but oftentimes it's people who have not are not stars yet. Oftentimes the, the that's the movie that makes them a star. You think of Kristen mm-hmm. Wiig was yeah. only that was her you know first big yeah. movie. Um, right. uh, Ben Stiller was not a gigantic star yet before you know before that before there's something about Mary. Um, and so I think a lot of times because the comedies are surprises um, in, in the, the ones that are hits, uh, it doesn't have that like full it doesn't have that full studio apparatus behind it going into the launch of it. Um, and that makes it feel like less of like a summer blockbuster. But I don't know. I, I guess my gentle pushback is sometimes though, that's sometimes it's not true. Like here I'm looking at Wedding Crashers, everyone like, knew was gonna be huge. Yeah. Yeah. And like I'm looking at Big Daddy right now. Like whatever you think yeah, of Big Daddy. It's like, Adam Sandler, Adam Sandler movie. movie's gonna yeah. make a bajillion yeah. dollars. Yeah. And that's why I mean one movie I'm really looking at hard Hard is Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights, Nights yeah. Because after because An- Anchorman, no, because it's too much. It was too much of like a surprise hit. Anchorman, but by the time we get to Talladega best, Nights, the word is out. Everyone Talladega knows that Nights, Farrell like, and McKay are going to deliver a 
a mega comedy. And that was like obviously going to make a ton of money. Yeah. Because the, the budget was up and it had Sasha Baron Cohen in it. And like it was going to make a lot of money. The problem is, Brett, is that though it opened with a huge $47 million weekend, it only grossed $148 million. Yeah, bad reviews, not a lot, not a lot of reviews. So does that, not that knock it out of our contention? Um, the other problem is these are like Beverly Hills Cop the, 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 the comedies that are candidates for this category are not the kind of they're, they're not like these aren't my favorite movies you know there's like like I mean Bridesmaids might be the I love Bridesmaids I mean Let's would you it. consider Barbie a comedy Barbie's yes. a comedy I think Barbie is a real contender here's why Barbie is a big time contender okay well, I mean, no. Tell me why. I mean, Ma I know you're going to agree talk, with this, but yeah, everything we talked about, massive cultural cultural phenomenon. Check that box yeah, three that, times. Yeah, it's right? a phenomenon. Um, made an un ungodly amount of money. Similar to Jaws, people were like, "Oh shit, movies." There's like another. There's another tier to this we haven't unlocked yet. That's how much money that Barbie made. Um, Sex and I, in the city? I like it. It's not my favorite movie. Sex in the City instead of Barbie? Uh, not Sex and the City instead of Barbie. I'm trying to find a, I'm trying to Grown Ups not instead of Barbie. Here's a, the Heat. I'm just naming all. Yeah, no, none of these. Waiting for a comedy to jump out. I just don't like any of these. Scary movies. Movie. I, I like Scary Movie. I, I, I loved Scary Movie when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, I did not. It's, it's just, it's just too, it's too fucking dumb. It's too fucking dumb for this list. It can't make the top ten. I think Bar, I think Barbie. Bridesmaids and not, but something about Bridesmaids just feels like a little indie. It feels like an, you know, it feels like a, the indie movie that like, that like, that, that like, like that, that did it, that did it, you know? I guess I know what you mean. I know it's not an indie movie, but it just has the vibe. Like, no, I, I know what you mean. Like it only opened with 26 million, but then yeah. because of word of right, mouth, exactly, it ended up exactly, grossing $170 yeah. million dollars domestic. Like, and I think we all were, we all like were happy, but we all were surprised that Bridesmaids became <sighs> the biggest thing ever. Crazy Rich I Asians, think, The Karate yeah. Kid, The Pitch Perfect Two. No, oh uh, man. Anyway, all right. So like, here, here's to me. Right, here's to me. Our comedy actual Barbie, actual, yeah, actual candidates. I don't know if I like Barbie enough for it to be There's on the list. There's something about like Mary, Barbie. Bridesmaids, Talladega Nights, and Barbie. See, now we're snobs about comedy, so now we're like, none of these are good enough for our list. We're not, we're not but we're really not that snobbish. I guess you're right. Like, okay. they, like it's okay. fine like for that. it's fine to say the, 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 like the scary movie sucks. Like that doesn't make you a snob. <laughs> it's fine to say Rush Hour Two looks cheap. It does. I, you know, like right. you gotta like you still gotta bring yeah. it. You know, so i i think barbie something about mary bridesmaids talladega nights and the and the one that checks like you got to check every box to make this list though and not one, here ready ready not ghostbusters that's not going to be it sorry i just don't like ghostbusters i don't like enough. i don't it, it never it never it's not never been a favorite Ghostbusters of mine. isn't funny enough. same with back to the future back to the future i don't and ghostbusters, give a shit about back to the future it just is never it's not gonna make our list it's sorry not gonna make our I'm, list look, i'm sorry good news it can be on everybody else's it can, list it can be on your list all right, this isn't a comedy, but this is comedy things bumming me out. I want to bring the room back up. Barbie, You're, Barbie grew on me. I, 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 I like I, it. I don't hate Barbie. I like I it enough. I like it enough for this list. I like it enough for this. I'd list. rather put Goldmember on there. Austin Powers three, but okay. Um, like I like Austin Powers three more than Barbie. This is the top ten summer and this blockbusters. This Bayou Shagney, I like that one more. This than is Barbie Brett too. and Joe's top ten summer blockbusters. Goldmember made two hundred and thirteen million dollars. Barbie made a billion. But 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 that's not the only f metric. Like Barbie's okay. Like I think we need to slow our roll. Brett, I'm gonna shift gears. I need. I, I have a nominee for you. Okay. The Da Vinci Code. Here's the case. Yeah, you don't you don't have to make it, but go ahead. <laughs> The case is this is Brett and Joe's list. <laughs> we get we get one. We get one on here. All right. Wait, let, let's put on this like eight Barbie and then cross it out and write the Da Vinci, da Vinci code, code next to it. Um <laughs> All right. But tell me tell me why I Bar think Barbie's yeah. good, but you know, and I like a lot of things about Barbie, but it is a gigantic toy commercial. I just you know, I know Batman Ch is too. Check. But check yeah i mean just that, just say i mean yeah and i know that, that i think that helps its case like for this thing. list yeah but i mean there's something insidious about it there's, there's something, something insidious about all these movies these are summer blockbusters mm. not Jurassic park so pure and beautiful okay okay i these I, are essentially the top 10 movies of late stage capitalism is no, what we're doing here. well kind of hancock can i interest you in hancock as the will smith uh no well men in black is a comedy all right, all right look sorry da vinci right. code here's the case yeah. You already know what you have to do to get Men in Black on the list. That's already that's I know, your that, decision. Those is, battle yeah. lines have been right. drawn. Tell me what. Tell me why I agree with you about Da Vinci Code. Well, number one. What's wrong it, with us? Number one. Whoa, we learned that Jesus Christ had a daughter or something. That was huge news. Big time. Big. Uh, no, this big news. like here's why. The Da Vinci Code actually was a cultural phenomenon. Checks that box. 
made a gajillion dollars. Checks that box. Big Ron Howard. Big Tom Hanks with the hair. Big running around uh, energy. Ian McKellen's the old man. Okay, this is the funniest part about this is this makes perfect sense to me and like sounds like <laughs> nonsense to any, anyone else. I am buying what you're selling 100%. <laughs> But I like Look, I, th- this I, movie I stepped wasn't, out this of movie my was, body for a second, and what you were saying sounds this like movie nonsense. made this movie was like um like what are some cool actual punk movies that made people mad like this like caused a version of a satanic panic like this the, the Da Vinci whole world, Code is punk yeah like, like 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 I know that's so silly to say but there was like a this really rabble rose it was a real provocateur of a film and a book and the church the Catholic Church. They could not fucking stand this story, this movie, anything about it. They turned it into such a thing that, like, it gave it all this cultural weight and baggage. People thought it was real. It's insane. And the movie itself is, like, you know, so, uh, so sillily operatic you yeah, know it's yeah, you know yeah. it's got silas whipping himself in the back oh, it's silas. got chases around italy like it is good we love it i just had to have said it or else i couldn't sleep tonight brett so here's the thing we are trying though i think sort of we are trying to pick movies that have cultural resonance or cultural phenomena check this is still going to be our list and that is why because dan vitale in the chat is making a very obvious point that like what do you say in our in our in our, in our sort of um, uh, stressed out search for a comedy. He's like, just put Ghostbusters for the no! comedy. No, it makes sense sorry, for so no. many people and for so many lists. It's just not going to make our list because I, uh, Joe and I just don't have a connection to Ghostbusters, and I'm sorry. I, it's I, have, sh- it I do have a connection to, to Da Vinci funny. Code. Um, yeah, I love Da Vinci Code. <sighs> Ted, there's Ted just staring. Oh, no, I'm not just kidding. All right, um, all right. Da Vinci Code, I think Da Vinci Code makes four? a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, I like. See, I like that. Uh, yeah, we I can't mean, go overboard. Da Vinci Code's going to be a nine or ten. I it's think it's kind of sad to me that we petered out so hard on the comedy thing. But let, let's pick it back up. No, Brett. we're going to find one. Right, we're going to uh, find uh, one. Let, let, any other one. name? I, that I'm going to. I'm. I think I'm. I'm. I'm feeling Barbie more and more. Gold member. I. I just let's say some more to get them all out before we yes. start putting some. Right. Some one. Here's down one paper. we love. Yeah, Here's tell, one tell that me, we love me, from Weekend in Bergman's 1999. Yeah. Is the Mummy? The Mummy. Love the Mummy. Now the Mummy made 150, right? 155, yeah, definitely is a so contender. So it barely qualifies, but it does qualify. The only problem I is, I mean, look, it has a fucking roller coaster of Universal Studios. Uh, they mm. just they 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 did the 25th anniversary re-release. They like, made people like the three, Mummy. The Mummy wasn't them, a cultural yeah. phenomenon, but no, 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 it 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 was huge, bro. Uh, yeah, it was huge. I don't know. I think it's like I think it's like 11. Okay, I think wait, it's going to be now 11. right above the Mummy. Yeah. What about Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I loved that movie growing up. I could be Bob down. Hoskins. I could be, be down for that. I, it's I, got I, animated I characters, and it's got the. I mean, I can quote it to you right now. It's I also as weird. It's as weird Rabbit. as you can get. I want something that is like as weird as you can get, but still qualifies. Jessica Rabbit, yeah. Kathleen Turner's yeah. Jessica Rabbit. That movie is so iconic, and um, I could see that making it. That movie is great, would that and, be our, and it would satisfies that, our comedy. Would that be our comedy? Yeah. Oh yeah, Bob Hoskins is hilarious in that movie Damn, as the hard did, boiled did, detective. Did Who Framed Right? Oh, come on, Hoskins. The yeah. dip. The, the dip. dip. The dip. Tune down the dip. I mean, did, need I say more? I'm. I mean, that's a very serious recommendation from me. Anything else? Oh, Brett. You know what we don't that have, might have Who yeah. Framed Roger Rabbit might have just knocked out Barbie. Good. Good. I love Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And look, no shade to Barbie. I like Barbie very much. But Barbie's like a top 15, maybe. Like the Day the After Tomorrow is just the fun to say it, because that movie's fun. It's not going to make no. the list. Gladiator, great movie, fun to say it. And yeah. it Gladiator, became, Gladiator checks a lot of boxes. Gladiator became a thing around Oscar season. Yeah. It became it's like, more of an it, awards. It, 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 even though it's not a summer blockbuster. We cannot have a... Right. Uh, I want to double check that I'm... We can't have a we can't have a movie on here that won. Do we have any best picture? We can't have a best picture on no, here. No, no. Yeah, uh, I don't think we do. I, I don't mean, think we do. No. No. no I mean, no, Spielberg no. was pissed off that he didn't win it, but he didn't win it for what? Oh, for Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well that what he was really was pissed off was, was was he got left off the best director. He list. did. Well, because oh, he, because you know what, Dog Day Afternoon got nominated well, for he, best director. Uh, the one that he was pissed off about was Fellini for Americord. Because Wait, stop. Because he was like, Wait. not that, not that, not that it wasn't deserving. Just like it was all his boys got the other four nominations, all like new all Hollywood the guys, people. and then and then uh, the Fellini yeah. for Americord. Yeah, that's so amazing because it was it was Kubrick, Altman, 
Yeah, because it was a uh, dog day afternoon. Nashville, who directed dog Nashville, afternoon? Barry Lyndon, Barry, Barry, uh, Sydney Lamette for dog Lamette, day afternoon, right, of course. Um, and then the other one was. Um, uh, hold on, remember. I'm gonna find it right now. Uh, um, oh, Milos Forman, because that's the year that, um, uh, despite, the despite all the competition nest. that year, <laughs> one, one for the, the cuckoos, and that's like swept. Yeah, which is the worst one of the lot that we just mentioned. Okay, back to it. I'm uh, so sorry. It is. It's not It's not Milos's fault, though. That source text sucks. All right, Pearl so. Harbor, Black Widow, no, uh, no, 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 Night no, at the Museum no. 2, John well, what Wick about, 3, Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean is interesting. Pir- I. Pirates of the Caribbean and Bourne, two franchises we haven't mentioned, two of my favorites. All right, so Bourne is too much handheld camera to be on a list of summer blockbusters. But I'm Bourne sorry. 3 was like, I think that was Spider-Man 2 summer, I think, in my head. It was a big deal. The Bourne movies were huge. I think I agree. They were but, huge. Uh, I love them. Huge. But there's just, there's a little too much. There's too much. Um, they, they just, they, they, they were too sort of contained, tight. That, that Paul Greengrass handheld good. camera. They're a little too good. I I, I know what you're driving at. And I know pi- what you're driving look, Pirates, at. I thought about this a lot because... I love me some Pirates. Pi- the, the thing, the, the, really the thing that hurts Pirates' chances is um, how the franchise just sort of spun out of control after that. It's like, right. you know, it's like there's... It, I, and I think for this list, that kind of matters because that really has... I think it is... At the time, if we made this list after... Uh, after um, uh, Black Pearl came out. Um, that's the first one, right? Curse mm-hmm. of the Black Pearl. Yeah. If we made this after Black Pearl came out, undoubtedly, probably, probably top five. Huge phenomenon. Um, such a fun movie. Everyone had fun at it. This and that. But the franchise just like went so like weirdly and poorly after that. I just think it. I. I it just doesn't. It doesn't stand out to me as making the top ten anymore. I think that if I remember the second one along your point about how the second one really can blockbuster it up. I remember going to the second one, being hyped out of my mind. It yeah. made a trillion dollars. Yeah. And though it was extra long, I remember loving it. I yeah. do think, though, that like unlike some of these other sequels we have here, uh, Terminator 2, Dark Knight, like it's just not that as good as those ones. That's, and the first yeah, one, yeah. I, I the, though I loved it, saw the movie theater, and people went, to, it made a lot of money, like... Kind of reminding me of your point about the sequels and how because the first one was feel, a surprise. People didn't know. It was know. a surprise. They were like, you know, all the, and all the test screenings. It was like, oh, Giant Depp's doing this like weird character, and it's based on a theme park ride. Are people going to come out for this? They did. So it didn't have like the full apparatus behind it, the full engine and behind the second it. One d- second did. one did. It's just like it just I wasn't. Don't know. I, I like the second one because yeah. like, but like, not, I I know in my heart it's not as good as Terminator no. Two. Come on now. Um, last one that we haven't said, Brett. Is Bad Boys Two okay? Yeah, now, Bad Boys Two, a movie that I have fully reevaluated after your amazing analysis of it on last ah. week's episode, as the um, uh, quintessential post nine eleven American movie. The problem with Bad Boys Two, and I think it's so indicative of summer blockbusters yes, that it, maybe it, it can break it out of this. It only made one hundred and thirty eight million dollars in its run. It opened huge, forty seven million dollar opening weekend, but then bad reviews felled it. Uh, to the 138 million mark. We've so uh, been, we've, it's just do- disqualified then. It doesn't qualify. It, it, you can't change the rules because you want Bad Boys 2 on the list. You made the rules. I we got to stick by it. Let's I just know. say it's disqualified then. It's disqualified. Sorry. It's disqualified down Those here with Pocahontas, Triple X, Mamma Mia, Fast and the Furious, iRobot, American Pie 2, Lilo and Stitch. War for the Planet of the Apes, Gremlins, Talladega Nights, knocked up all under 150 yeah, million. Yeah, here's a here's a couple more. making the list. Here's a couple more uh, uh, options that I, yeah, I don't think out. are top ten caliber, but um, uh, X two, the uh, yep. the second X Men movie, uh, w- which I love, is really good. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of all, all, basically all the X Men are are on there, mm-hmm. uh, and they they qualify in terms of money, summer blockbusters, but I don't know, they just like. They like Spider Man, and if we're, we're talking about comic book movies, Spider Man and and, and no, the Batman I, movies are yeah. just so foundational for the genre, and they're good, and they made a shit ton of money. I just don't think X two can compete with that. Um, face off, like ninety, like Face Off, Con Air, those kind of that era of nineties movies. Yeah, um, there was um, you know what I Force you know what I really here. like that is um would be probably like top 20 for me is mm-hmm. uh, is Edge of Tomorrow mm-hmm. the Tom Cruise Emily Blunt yep, I like that movie uh, it's so much fun it just is not going to check the cultural phenomenon box you know right. um Rambo 
for 80s. Love Rambo. I'd think about Rambo. Do we know? Where did we settle on Die Hard? I saw Die Hard appearing on some people's like lists, but like I think is I it not on my short list? No, I don't know if it like I don't know if it meets your criteria though. So I, I, I'm not sure. My criteria came out between Memorial Day and the first week of September. Um, May I love Die Hard came out between May and September, and it made over 150 million dollars domestic. I have total box office at 141.5 million. So I think it's under. I think that's the problem. Uh, okay, that's, I think that's, that's the problem. Why I'm not yeah. finding it. Yeah, um, it did come out in the summer. It just is not. It didn't meet your 150 million All right. mark. Sorry, not enough of a block. It does, and it's look, not a block and that you, that there you criteria go. is there for a reason because these need to be mega movies. These, right. these need to be. Mega I think it's time. I think movies. it's time to put All some right. fucking things down All on right. paper. Here are what yeah, I have. Tell us the short list. Here's our finalists. Okay. Da Vinci Code. Yeah. Star Wars Episode um, Five: The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, Mission Impossible, um, Speed and Twister, Terminator 2, uh, a comedy, and we're thinking maybe Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Or Barbie. Of, or Barbie. Or both those. So let's say it's come down, it comes down to that. Who Framed Roger Rabbit or Barbie. So that's seven and eight. Raiders uh, of the Lost Ark, Spider-Man, uh, Dark Knight. Or Burton's Batman. Um, let's see. Jaws. Jurassic Park. Independence Day or Men in Black. And then, what the fuck is LK? I don't LK. know. No, hold on, hold on. That's one of the big ones. LK. Lion King. Lion King. Thank you, Lion King. Uh, All right, so that's about, like, that's what, around Why does John 15. DeBond have his own fucking... Wait, 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 wait Speed or what's the, what's the other movie Or made? Twister. Oh, Twister. Here's the problem with Twister. Because we need, Twister, we need something that's like a little like... Twister's Act 3 is not great. Yeah. Sorry. Act 3 of Twister is just okay. First two acts, I was so there. Third act kind of falls apart. Let's see what we do, Brett. We, we're not there yet. Let's let's start at the top. Okay. All right. One, I, we Number both one, feel passionate about Jurassic Park. I, I think it's got to be Jurassic I Park. I feel passionate about Jurassic Park. I think it's got to be Jurassic Park. Park. Even though, even though uh, Jaws, Jaws is rules. the original and rules, no. Jurassic Park is, yes. it's the guy who made Jaws with a summer blockbuster like budget, mm -hmm. and he, it is it. It is the summer blockbuster movie. We love it. It checks every box. Jurassic Park is going to be number one. It opened with $208 million opening weekend. It's the biggest thing that ever happened. That's the biggest opening weekend domestically yep. ever. All right. <laughs> That's crazy. Jurassic Park number one. Um. Oh wait, that was Jurassic World. Wait, hold on a second. That's so no, that funny. was Jurassic World. Yeah, Jurassic yeah. World. Yeah. opened with two hundred and eight. That's how every, that's how hyped everybody was no, for the yeah. reboot of Jurassic yeah, Park. For the reboot, right? That, my mistake. The second run of the franchise. All right, all right. but no, number the original two, Jurassic Park is number one. So we, we got like uh, two, three, four is like there's Raiders, there's Jaws, yeah. There's what Star are the candidates? Wars, there's Lion King. Honestly, I I think it's those. I think for number two, it's either. Raiders, Jaws, Lion King, maybe maybe the Batman, maybe whatever Batman we go with. Let's do Jaws and let's do Raiders. One, two, three. That's so crazy. I don't like. I don't know if uh, I like Spielberg that much. But but what movie of this list do you like more than either Raiders or Jaws? You like Tim Burton's Batman better than Raiders of the Lost Ark? <laughs> do you like The Da Vinci Code more than Jaws? Here's the problem with I don't like Spielberg is, A, well, you keep watching his films and telling me how fucking great they are. I, think I you, know. I think you do, kid. I know. And number two is, which one of those movies is better than Jaws and or Raiders of the Lost Ark? M M the Lion King? You know You know what? Uh, you know what? What about the Will Smith? Uh, cutting in the cutting in there because yeah, I think the again, Will Smith. I think Spielberg is the face yeah. uh, as the director. I think Will Smith is the yeah. face of this genre as an actor. I think I think whatever Will Smith we do, but that comes down to you deciding what Batman you want on here. So this is all. So gonna, I can either get The Dark Knight and Independence Day, or I can get Tim Burton's Batman and Men in Black. That's right. That's right. <sighs> you know what I should do is The Dark Knight and Independence Day, two huge summer blockbusters. But here's what I'm going to do. Oh, God. I'm going to pick Batman and Men in Black. I actually love that. I actually love that. Here's why. Batman number one. Guys, I wasn't there. Whatever. But we don't get Batman's 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, unless that thing changed the world. Batman came out. It was in every Happy Meal. It, people never stopped talking about it. We got the we got the whole like Tim this. Burton run. I like we got this. the whole Schumacher run. Then that we got the whole well. Nolan run. That worked out well. I like that. I got Men in Black at number two. Then wow. let's go Jaws at three. Yeah. Um, Empire Strikes Back. Then Raiders. No, let's let's do Raiders. The honor of beating Empire Strikes Back. I like that. I like that. Yeah, Raiders. So I have to write out the whole title. Thank you. Uh, then. Star Wars. Oh, wait, Brett, Brett, yeah, I hold off one second. Yeah, hold off. Hold, hold off, off one hold second. Hold off. There. No, no, no. That's not right. Okay, wait. Just here, go I through. Fucking, I put fucking Lion King over Star Wars. I put I fucking know. Barbie over Star Wars. Maybe Star Wars is ten. Maybe Star Wars doesn't make the list. Maybe Star Wars doesn't make the list. Maybe Star Wars doesn't make the list. Okay, I don't on. know yet. All right, this is our list. This is our list. I felt yeah. Jurassic Park, Men in Black, Jaws. What was four there? Raiders. Of Raiders the Lost of the Lost Ark. All right. What, what are some of our nominees now? Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Barbie. Okay. Twister. All right, uh, uh, Da Vinci Code, yeah. Mission Impossible, Speed mm. Twister, T2, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Barbie, Lion King, Spider-Man. Mm, Spider-Man. This is going to be fucking hard. Spider-Man. Out of everything you just said. I, Spider-Man I like at Spider-Man. five? Yeah, Spider-Man at five. I can't put Spider-Man over Lion King. Then let's go Lion King, Spider-Man, but that beats Batman. That's what's important. Is that Sam Raimi's Spider-Man is our number one superhero summer blockbuster. Okay. Lion King at five. I like that. That's smart. That's, that's nice. just smart. You yeah. know what that is, Brett? That's just us being fucking honest. Honest. Totally that's honest. Just, that's just true. Guys, go back and watch The Lion King. It's so <laughs> fucking it's good. It's fucking great. It's so, the work Jeremy Irons does is, is a scar in that movie alone is Be prepared. mind-blowing. It made $191 million its opening weekend, and it went on to gross domestically only $550 million. I'm sure it made a billion dollars All right, worldwide. so you have Spider-Man at six then. Yeah, Sam Raimi, Spider Man at six. Fuck Star Wars. We don't need that shit. All right, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, sorry, All right, sorry, now sorry. we're down to four slots left. All right, wait, wait, wait. Okay. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Um, what do we got? What do we got? Look, we need a comedy. So let's decide. Or Wedding Crashers. I don't like. I don't like it enough. <laughs> I like who. I like you know what. Neither do. I. <laughs> yeah, I don't fucking like it. I just kind of like liked it not being. I like that it's original, you know, it's just like, yeah. it's an original movie, it's an original comedy, but so, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the problem with that is we're going to get a lot of raised eyebrows. Barbie, it's like, yeah, duh. You know? Fr- like, yeah, do people think of Roger Rabbit as a summer blockbuster? Well, you know, just recency bias says Barbie, but, you know, Who I mean, Framed, I mean, made a, I mean it, look, it, it, it hit the criteria. Oh, it, it hits it and then some. It, co- it came out in June and made $350 million. Let's do Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I love it. I mean, literally, Brett, that's music. To, I can't tell you how much I love that That feels movie. like 10 to me, though. Oh, yeah, it definitely feels lower. It feels lower. Because okay. we already have Lion King so high. So, or maybe like 9 Ten is probably going to be like a one, either like T two speed or Twister. All right. Well. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay. Who framed Roger? God. Da, <laughs> is Da Vinci Code just going to invalidate this whole list? <laughs> Brett, the list is already like is Da Vinci Code going to invalidate the whole list. Or, I feel like Da Vinci Code is has to be on here though. Here, look, look. We have four slots left. What if it was like, like? Let me right, just. I'm name. gonna put Roger Rabbit at nine. That feels like where it's gonna go. So I'm Roger gonna... Rabbit, Empire Strikes Back, Da Vinci Code, and Barbie all make it, and then everyone's happy. Hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Okay, okay. so here's what we got. We've got. Okay, okay, yeah, this is good. And Mario, you can cut. You can cut to me for this. I'll try to get this on. All right. <laughs> We have right. Jurassic Park, Men in Black, Jaws, Rares of the Lost Ark. Nobody can argue with any of that. And, and I don't like let them argue. I don't give a shit. But, and, and but five but lines. I can't argue with that. And, and five, five lines. Like, no one's arguing with top, top five. Top five are solid. Then Raimi's Spider Man. I think that's a good start. Who framed Roger Rabbit at nine? Uh-huh. And then we've got for three slots, we've got Da Vinci Code, uh, Empire Strikes Back, Mission Impossible, Speed Twister, T2, Barbie. And that's it, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that means just literally, let's see, count them up. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven movies for three slots. Well, first there has to be an actual fucking mega smasher, whether it's T2, Empire Strikes Back, or something of that ilk. There has to be just like a mega one that we have to include. I really like T2. It's a lot of fun. I love T2. Yeah. No, I love T2. Yeah. I, I, l- 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 let's put... And we get a Valley movie on here. Well, I, look, I, 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 I've seen, I love Terminator 2. Maybe T2 is 10. T2 maybe feels like, look, T2, 10, and then knock out Speed and Twister. And that knocks out Speed and Twister. 
I, I'm so sorry. Just speed doesn't give me summer blockbuster enough, even though I love it. And Twister's the, Twister's eleven. Twister's like yeah, it's just Twister's not. 11. It's just not. A hundred percent right. You do get a Philip Seymour Hoffman before you do, and you know what? He How does, fun would it be to have him on in this his list? early career? Any of Bill Pullman? Like I don't care. What about Bill under? Pullman. Oh, he's such an underrated actor. He's so good. Oh, he just recently passed. I don't care about Bill. No, Pullman. not because of that. Because of no, no. I'm just saying. Like, sorry, True Lies. He's so funny and weird. Uh, the Near know. Dark, that vampire movie. Bill Pullman's amazing. Big love. Sure, whatever you need to say. So. Twister 7, Da Vinci Code 8, Terminator 2, 10. All right, hold on. Hold on. A, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait, did that include Twister? Yeah, on, it did. Right, I was start throwing you a bone. Right, Twister 10, then what? T2? No, Twister 7, Da Vinci Code 8, T2, 10. I think that, I think that might be it. Or should we put T2, 8, Da Vinci Code 7, Twister 10? Or does... Or Who Framed Roger Rabbit goes down to 10. So Mission Impossible is a no for you? No, I'd rather have that than Twister. I was just trying to be a fun p- player. I like Mission Impossible more than Twister, but Twister certainly was... Like, I like that the bad guy was weather. So Star Wars is off, because it's like... Oh, hon- cause honestly, I'm just trying to put it on the list. This is our list. Well, I, look, I think... Okay, so... Everything you've... Like, I legit... I would watch Twister, Speed, T2, or Mission Impossible, or The Da Vinci Code before I watched Empire Strikes Back. That's just me, and this is my, this is our list. And I think the same is true for you. I'm yeah. sorry, y'all. I just, it's like, no, hey, Brett, Ghostbusters, yeah, yeah. Back to the Future, Star Wars, yeah. some of these big movies, they, they, they just never yeah. like p- became my movies, you know? It never became my movie. Mm-hmm. It's not going to make my list. Yeah, see, I feel like ter- I can go Terminator 2 or Empire Strike Back are equal to me. They're both okay. like that good. Like they're both so good. Well, then, I, you then pick I, I'll tie break and say you T2. Pick you so. Pick Okay, so I like that we both know that Da Vinci Code's on the list. That's really important to me. I are right, you want to bump it already? All right, all right. Look, Da Vinci Code's heads. Here, he fought the good fight. Here's here's the here's the big problem with me and Da Vinci Code is I uh, it might be my least favorite of the Robert Langdon movies. That's, right, that's a problem. Well, Terminator Two is my least favorite out of the first two Terminators. You know, it's that kind of a thing. But, well, but the so so p- pitch me on pitch me on what it's going to be if we're not going to include uh, Da Vinci. Like you're, you're going to be like, oh, well, I got to put Barbie in there. It's like no, we're going to put Da Vinci Code. No, 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 the last three, the last three spots would be Mission Impossible, Twister, and, and Terminator Two, which feels like so right. That feels so right. Because see, the the other problem with Da Vinci Code is like this list is about us okay. meeting the world okay. halfway. Okay. The world meets us okay. halfway, and we meet the world halfway. Like, okay. the, the 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 honestly, okay. The reason that Da Vinci Code can't make it is the same reason, in a sense, that Star Wars can't make it. Is that Star Wars is too much on that side? It's too much the world's movie. It's not. It's not enough okay. our movie. Yeah. Da Vinci Code is too much our movie, yeah. and not enough you're the right. world's movie. You're right. I'm letting you're you've you've said it well. All right. So how about <sighs> kind of like all right? So pitch me your thing again. It was good. I think. Um, what about Batman? C- was Batman not on here? No, Batman on Dark Knight's not on there. Fuck. Well, we well, got we well, got fuck Twister burn. then. Oh no, but like, no. but Twister gives it some color. I know you like that. Like you Twister know what? gives you, it a different flavor. You know what's gonna knock off? You know what Batman knocks off? I T2? think T two. T two. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a good thing because I'm. James Cameron's not my guy. Put Twister 10, though. Or okay. this Mission Impossible. No, Twister 10. Yeah, Twister 10. And then uh, Mission Impossible 8, Batman uh, 7. Yes. It's amazing. Yes, that's right. And that's Burton's Batman that's right. 1989. That's right. That's right. That's it. This that's is right. right. Let, me that's see. Let me see this list. This is correct. This is the correct list. This is Brett and Joe's list of yes. the top yes. 10 summer this is blockbusters this is of the all list. time. This is the list. This is it. This is actually it. I feel this in oh, my bones. Oh, that's actually it. Everyone yes. can agree. Yes. Shall I? All right, hold on. Let me get my... Yeah. Oh, oh God. God. This is... This no, you got so much going right. on here. I'm okay. going to read it. You want to read it? Or? You read it. You read it. Movies Baby with Five Wise Top 10 Summer Blockbusters of All Time. 10. Twister. 9. Who Framed Roger Rabbit. 8. Mission Impossible. 7. Batman. Burton's Batman. 1989. 6. Spider-Man. Raimi Spider-Man. Raimi. 5. Lion King. I love that. Original. Four, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Three, Jaws. Two, Men in Black. One, Jurassic Park. Correct. 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 Well, we did it again. Correct. We were right. Correct. How are, what we a always, show. We always figure it out. God we always damn. get it right. That's a, that's, this is a tough one. 